to another video as part of our psychology course. By now, you've probably heard of a few studies that psychologists have conducted. These studies are all useful in helping us to understand human behaviour, but none of them are perfect. In fact, no psychological study is perfect. Your job as a psychology student is to be able to evaluate research studies. That is, say what's good about them and what isn't so good. For paper one in your GCSE, you will learn 10 key studies. You need to know about these studies in detail, but you also need to know their strengths and weaknesses. In your GCSE exams, you may also be given information about a made up study invented just for the exam. And you have to say what the strengths and weaknesses are of that study. You may also be required to suggest improvements for the study, but we'll talk about that in another video. There are many things you can talk about when discussing the strengths and weaknesses of psychological research, but here's a handy acronym to help you remember. GRAVE. There's nothing morbid or spooky about this grave. It's just here to help you remember how to evaluate research. G. G is for generalizability. Can the findings in this study be generalized to the wider population? For example, if your study into the effects of brain damage on amnesia only has one participant, you won't be able to say that all people with amnesia behave in the same way. One participant may have unique characteristics particularly to them. R. R is for reliability. If this study was repeated, how likely is it that you're going to get the same results? A. A is for applications. Can you apply the findings to real life? Does this research support a theory? For example, Gunderson 2013. This study has real life applications in terms of how parents and teachers should give process praise to children. Gunderson's study also supports Dweck's growth mindset theory. V. V is for validity. Is the study actually measuring what it says it's measuring? How likely is it that the independent variable influenced the dependent variable? Could it have been something else entirely? And don't forget our old friend ecological validity. Would the participants act the same way in a real life setting? E. E is for ethics. Did the researcher stick to the ethical guidelines? For example, Milgram did not protect his participants from psychological harm, but he did debrief the participants at the end of the study. So there you go. If you get a brain freeze in the exam, Grave might just help dig you out of trouble. I hope this has been useful. I'm Kate with MBA. Thanks for watching.